Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this week, we will learn how to use a C-sharp script to build the player movement, camera controller, signaling patterns, scenes transition, and fade in and fade out effect. In this video, we will learn the simple player movement and camera controller. Okay, let's get started. Alright, in the previous video, we have established all levels by using tail map system. We have one single tile palette to save all tiles in tile palette window. There are three different things. If you are curious about how to make by using tile map system, I highly recommend you to watch my previous videos. In this video, we will talk about the player simple movement and the camera controller. We will first talk about the traditional and the simple way of following our target. Then we will give the camera two features, smoothly move and restrain the camera movement range. Let's create one new folder to save all c -sharp script in this project. Because we will make one character animation by blend tree later, we can simply drag one single character sprites to replace our animate player. You will notice that we do not see the sprites. The main reason is that our sprites is on the default layer, while our tile map layers are set to the background layer. We change, we change to the foreground sorting layer. Also, our sprites are very smaller than our environment. If you watch my last video, you will understand the reason is here, the pixel per unit. You can check the size of the sprites and change to the closed number in the pixel per unit slot. Now you can see our player has the normal size. Also change the filter mode to pointer. We name our character as player and add the rigid body component to D. Also, adding collider component to our player. You can choose to the box collider 2D or cycle collider 2D. It depends on your player shape. Don't forget to set the gravity to zero because we are making one top-down game. Now we can create one script called player controller and drag the new script into our player game object. Because we will use the rigid body velocity to control our player movement, we have to get the rigid body component in our C# -sharp script. In star methods, we have to get the rigid body component first. Get component is the fast way of accessing other components. Then inside the update methods, we need to use the keyboard to control our player movement. We need to get the horizontal and the vertical access movement variables. So we create two private variables to represent them. We call them move h, move v. Inside the update methods, move edge is assigned to import dot get access row horizontal. The horizontal wall is the string type and it's the capital H. So what's the horizontal? The horizontal is the default string type value. If you open the project settings, choose the import session, you will find many import access named as the established by Unity, including our Y access controller vertical. Import.getAccessRow returns the value of the vertical access identified by access name with no smoothing filtering applied. It. If you want something smoothly filtering applied, it, you can type import.getAccess. It all works. Now we can type rigidbody.velocity equals to the new vector 2, move h, move v. but we do not have the move speed value. So we create one float type variables. 
I used to use serialized field. It cannot access by other script, but you can check on your inspector. Now we can press the play button to see the result quickly. It works. But the player rotated by himself after hitting the collider. We have to control the Z-axis when we play the 2D game. OK, we have completed our player movement. One more thing, we should use fixed update for best performance because fixed update has the frequencies of the physics system. It called every fixed frame rate from update runs once per frame. Fixed update can run once, zero, or several times per frame, depending on how many fixed frames per second are set in the time settings and how fast or how slow the frame rate is. Fixed update is used for being in step with the physics engine. So anything that need to be applied to a rigid body should happen in fixed update. Now we will start to build our camera. We create one C-sharp script called camera controller. Drag the script into the camera game object. Later, we will introduce the blend trees to build our character animation. So in this case, we only use one single sprite to represent our sprites. So don't worry too much now. Inside the script, we need to have our player movement. Type private transform target. The reason I use the transform type is that we only need to the position of this game object. You can choose to change the type to game object if you want. And later, if you want to get the target position, you have to type target.transform.position. In this case, we used to use the transform type. In star methods, we have to get the target. Because the target is our player, we can find the target by using find game object by tag. Don't forget to get the transform component as well because our target type is a transform type. Bend to Unity and set our player tag as player. It's so easy to ignore this part during coding. After that, in update methods, we want our camera position is followed by target position. We want transform.position is equal to the target position. We try to type new vector 3, target.position.x, target.position.y. For the z values, if you type target.position.z, our camera z axis value will be the same as our player z axis value, which means these two game objects will overlap with each other. Our camera cannot focus on our player. So in here, the z axis value should be the current camera z value. Type minus 10 or transform.position.z. Now back to Unity and check the result. OK, this is a traditional camera controller. Camera can follow our player continuously in this game. Now make some advance in our camera. First, we want our camera follow the character smoothly instead of suddenly follow it. Actually, there is another little part we have to talk about it. In camera, we can choose to the late update for better choice. First, let's change it and see the effects. There seems to be no difference after switching to the late update. Well, for the Unity, there is something different. When you press the play button on the first frame, the player and the camera will both start on the first frame. So in the first frame, the camera controller cannot get the player controller at the same frame. The camera will run behind the player controller. They cannot run at the same frame. We can Google the execution order in Unity. Unity has provided one great page to explain the order of execution of event function. This is a script lifecycle flowchart. I will link below.
Now we start to make our camera smoothly move now. First, let's command our previous code and mark as our transitional methods. Transform.position is equal to here we have to here we have to use another API static method called vector3.lerp. In hit window, we can see three parameters A, B, and T. The first parameters means our current position. In other words, is our camera position. The second parameter is our target position, which means the second parameter is our player position. The third parameter is the speed, how fast our camera moves to the target position. So we type transform.position. Target dot position and the move speed dot time dot delta time. We can set the private variable to store our move speed. Because of the serialized field, we set to the private variable. We can see in inspector now. We gave the camera move speed to two values. Now we can change the speed to 0.5. The camera will move slowly. Also, you can change to the suitable speed for your game. The camera will spend a certain time to follow our player. Also, vector3.lerp can be used in many other conditions such as the gradient change color. We can go to the Unity website to find the details. Now we add the last features of your camera. When our player moves to the edges of the map, we find our camera almost move outside our ground. We want our camera stop it when the player go to the edge of the wall. Now back to Unity, we don't need to change our current code above. We type transform.position as equals to. We hope our camera stop at some certain position. Click on our camera first. When the player move to here, we only want our camera follow to here and stop it. So the current x position is the minimum x axis value of our camera. The same reason we can move our camera to record our max access, access values of our camera movement. So the camera X position value will be controller between the minimum access and the max access value. We have to create several flow type variables to save these values. Back to Unity, we need to copy and paste the values into our new variables in Inspector. Each value is depends on your game, so don't copy my values unless you use my complete project. Now, how to use these variables to limit our camera movement? We are introducing one method called math.clamp. There are three parameters in this method. The first parameter is the real value, what you want to limit it. The second and the third values is the minimum values and the maximum value. The methods will restrict the values from minimum to maximum. For instance, we have one public float variable called test. We have one minimum value and the max value to 0 to 10. We can use debug.log to see the result. When the value is equal to 4, the result will absolutely return 4. 
if you inside this range, the number value will return itself. When you change the value to the 99, it will return the value 10 because the max range of this value is 10. No matter what value is 99 or 999, the max value is number 10. If you change the value to minus 5, it will return to 0 because the minimum value is 0. No matter what the value is, minus 5 or minus 10, always returns the minimum value if the value is smaller than the minimum value. Now we can set our camera position, new vector 3, x, y, z. The first part is our x position. We used mass.clamp. The first parameter is the value of our camera x axis position. The minimum x axis value is minimum x. The max x axis value is max x. For our camera y axis position, the minimum y axis value is set to minimum y. The max y axis value is max y. For the z value is our camera current z axis because we will not change the z axis value in 2D game. Save this script and bend to Unity, making sure each variable has set completely. When we press the play button, we can check our camera final effect. Okay, let's review this tutorial. We have one player which contains the rigid body component to responsible for our player movement. Also, we have one collider to restrain our player movement. For the camera controller, we have to get the player current position at any time. We have provided one traditional way to follow the target. Also, we make our camera smoothly move and restrain the range of the camera. Now, in the next tutorial, we will introduce a singleton pattern in Unity. It will help us a lot in the next scene transition sections. Hope you like these videos. If you like it, hope smash the likes and subscribe button. Alright, see you in the next time.